What is Linux file system? Let's understand what is file system in general, because it applies to every operating system, not just Linux. We store data on physical disks, SSDs or hard drives. And example of a data is a file, text file or picture or a video. You cannot just put your data on this physical disk. First, you need to install a file system on a disk. File system allows us to store data, like files, on a disk in an organized way so that the files can be easily stored on a physical disk and can be retrieved from a physical disk. There are many different kinds of file systems out there. APFS, NTFS, FAT, EXFS, EXT4. Each one has a different structure, different speed of writing and reading files. Flexibility, for example, EXFAT can be used on both macOS and Windows systems, while APFS, Apple File System, is only for macOS. NTFS is generally for Windows, but can be used on macOS with some limitations. XFS and txt 4 are only for Linux. So if, for example, you buy a USB flash drive or external portable SSD, and I'm going to take this SanDisk 1TB Extreme Portable SSD as an example, I bought it a couple months ago and I use it for storing videos that I'm shooting here as they are quite large in size because we are shooting 4K and my computer's own storage goes out of space quickly. It comes with EXFAT file system on it. Why? It is flexible. It is quite easy to use it. You just connect it to your computer with a cable and you go ahead and use it. And it will work out of the box with macOS, with Windows, with Linux and every other operating system. So that's a nice thing about the XFAT, it's very flexible. But what I did, I actually wiped out the EXFAT file system and installed APFS on it. And why I did it? Because APFS has a better performance on Mac. Uh, but if I would use EXFAT, if I would need this on both macOS and Windows systems, I would probably use EXFAT because that one is more flexible. Now about folder structure. Note that folder is the same thing as a directory, the synonyms. On every computer with an operating system, usually there are a lot of files. There could be systems files, your files. Last time I checked on a fresh new machine with Linux on it, there were more than 83,000 files on it, on a fresh new machine, with no additional packages installed. Because of so many files, you need to organize them into folders, otherwise it will get messy and hard to find files. Now, let's talk about folder structure on Linux systems. All the Linux file systems, ext3, ext4, xfs and other ones, they all have a similar folder structure. This is what we call the Linux file system hierarchy. The very first folder is slash, also called as root folder. This is a parent folder for all other folders. Let's go ahead and see it on a terminal. Basically, I'm going to use cd command to go into this root folder slash folder. And with pwd, I can check that I'm in that particular folder. Again, under root, we have more folders dedicated for different things. It's all about structuring things so that we know where is what. First one I would say to mention is bin folder. Bin folder for commands. Examples are bin ls. Other examples could be touch command. Other ones could be pwd. They all located under bin. And I'm actually using this ls is listing itself here in this example. So usually we put most of the commands under bin. That's how we structure things. You don't have to put it there, but usually it's a best practice to put it in there. Other ones, for example, etc folder. etc folder is for configuration files. This is where you configure different settings for different applications or for a system. A couple of example files would be probably etc local time, etc hosts, or etc resolve.com. The first file, etc local tile time, this is where you can configure a time zone in which time zone you want your server to be. Do you want it in a central time zone? Do you want it in a Pacific time zone? Uh, whatever time zone it needs to be in. Other one, for example, 
etc hosts. etc hosts contains local DNS names. If you need some DNS name to resolve to an IP address, this is where you're gonna put it locally. But it's gonna be only local to this machine. Another one, etc resolve.com. This folder contains name servers, DNS servers. This IP address, it's an IP address of the DNS server. So this machine is gonna, is gonna contact this DNS server to find out the IP addresses of the DNS host names. Another example is probably TMP folder. And let me again clear the screen. TMP folder. This folder is for temporary files. Usually system deletes files from this folder periodically. So you shouldn't put important files in this folder. I mean, examples, it could be any kind of files. Right now on my system, I have some service file and I'm not sure what exactly it does, but it's a temporary file. You could put any files you want here. You shouldn't put anything important, any kind of temporary files. The next one we're gonna look at is a file var folder. Now this one it's a little more difficult to understand. And there is no very clear definition of it. So this folder is used for many different things. But it usually contains files to which the system writes data constantly while it's operating. As an example, slash var log file. This folder contains log files of the system. Log files constantly get written as the application or system is operating as it con contains the events happening. Uh, consider this example. I'm gonna tell the last layer, the last 10 lines of var log messages file. I'll see only the last 10 lines and it's logging some events. And let me make some system change so that I can show you what exactly it's gonna look, what kind of, how it's gonna look like if it logs something. Um, let's take this as an example. Let me change the host name of my machine, of the server. This is the host name of the server. I'm gonna go ahead and change it. You can use the host MCTL status command to check the full static host name and other details about your system. And I'm gonna use hostname ctl set hostname command to set the new hostname for it. And the new hostname, I'm gonna give it name my super machine number one. And enter. Let me check the hostname status again. And as you can see, the static host name has changed from uh, this name to this particular name, my super machine one. Um, by the way, the hash sign has been removed because host names cannot contain hash signs. So this is that's why it's included in the pretty host name. But uh, the default host name is without hash sign. And let's see if this event is in the log. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna tail the last 10 lines of warlock messages. This is how it looked like last time. The last 10 lines is how they look like. Now let's check again. And now you see these events. Change pre host name to my super machine number one. Change static host name to my super machine one. Change host name to my super machine one. So it logs events, what happened in your system. And it could be application logs, it could be system logs. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. Is we're gonna take a look at the home folder. So home folder is for home folders of different users. Right now I have only one single user under home. And let me clear the screen. Only one single user under home. But if I add more users, uh, let me add a new user called Marcel, 
and now if I do ls there is a new home folder for a new user so it contains their home folders there is one exception for home folders there is another folder called slash root now please don't con don't confuse this with a root folder when we say slash it's a root folder but when it's slash root it's a root user's home folder because root user it's a special user he has his own home folder and let's go check it out he has his own folder all the other ones by default all the other users they have their home folders under slash home so please again do not confuse slash root with just slash this is a root user's home folder this is just root folder so there is a difference okay so well there are many other ones of course if we come back to slash there are many other folders there is a slash boot, there is slash usr, there is slash opt, slash sbin, slash dev, slash var, slash mount. I'm not gonna go over each of them because you don't have to be familiar with every one of them and their purpose. You can always Google and find out this information on the internet. And of course, you can create your own folders as well for organizing your own files. For example, you can create slash videos folder under root under root you can create your own slash videos folder where you can store your own videos so it's up to you how you want to organize but this one's this is a general practice best practice on organizing system files but you're not limited to this another example of a custom folder for example under home marcel i'm gonna create documents folder for marcel it's also a custom folder macOS has also a similar but slightly different structure because it's also a unique space operating system. So what we're gonna do right now, demo side-by-side -side walkthrough of the UI interface and terminal interface of the macOS. Okay, so here is my screen and I'm SSH into a server. This is an EC2 machine, EC2 server. Um, what I'm gonna do is I don't need this remote machine. I wanna go into my local machine and I'm just gonna open a new tab in terminal. And right now, this terminal is no longer an EC2 machine, but it's rather my local computer. And let's open a finder side by side with terminal. Here you go. This is a finder. It's a file manager for macOS systems. Now, let's do the same steps that we do on a terminal on the finder. So first, I'm gonna go to root folder. macOS also has a root folder. And as you can see, I'm in a root folder. Let's do the same on a finder. So finder, you cannot just go to root folder here. You have to click on go. First, you click on your finder and then go. Go to folder and you can specify to which path exactly you wanna go. So I want to go to slash. This is right, go. And let's change the view. Okay, so applications folder, I'm in the root folder and there is an applications library folder. So let's check it out on the terminal as well. Let's applications library system. Now note that you don't see every folder here. For example, you don't see this bin, course, dev folders in the finder because Apple hides them. Apple doesn't want you to see those files because you don't really need to look into them as a regular user. But there is a way to shows these hidden files on a finder but that's a separate topic let's go into some folder let's say let's go to users folder and users folder it's a folder which contains home folders for different users on a linux it was slash home on a mac os it's slash users by default and as you can see here i have several home folders here let's go to users on a finder as well green guest permanent guest shared mars mars so here's my folders and these three are users guest is a user mars is a user this one is also user this one is i'm not sure what folder is it but this folder basically contains our users and i can go to for example mars folders it's my current user and 
let's check it out what we have inside it. And here are a bunch of different files, desktop folder, documents folder, downloads folder, let's go from finder as well. Okay, applications, uh, downloads, and other files here. The same things that I see here, I can see on the terminal. It's how we navigate on a terminal, and this is how we're gonna navigate in a finder. And I can go to, for example, downloads folder, downloads folder of Marcel user, of Mars user. Now let's do ls, see a bunch of different files here. Let's do the same thing on a finder, go to download, and the same files I should see here, for example, this 20% these videos, here is the one. Here it is, just a different order, but pretty much the same files. It's all the same files. And this was a comparison of uh, navigating on a Linux, on a macOS system, on a terminal and on a finder. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.